Borneo is the third biggest island in the world, covering 747,000 square kilometers. It comprises of three countries, Sabah and Sarawak, Malaysia, as well as Brunei on the north side and Kalimantan, Indonesia on the south. The jungles of Borneo are rich with their endemic fauna and flora. Sabah, Malaysia, or the land below the wind, located at the northern part of Borneo, is the home to mammals such as Bornean pygmy elephant, orangutan, Sumatran rhinoceros, all of which are endangered. In the early 1950s, about 85% of Sabah was under some form of natural forest cover. By 2000, only about 58% remain. In order to create employment and generate income for the state, Sabah also set up a land use policy, which prioritized planting of commercial crops such as oil palm and cocoa. Forest clearing and agricultural crop cultivation has been the main agent for deforestation in the recent years. The unsustainable logging practices in the past have significantly affected the forest condition in Sabah. These commercial forest reserves need long periods to regenerate, with several decades needed before they can be harvested again. Then, Sabah's forests also gave way to industrial tree plantations and monoculture for the production of soft wood to replace the heavily damaged forest. All these factors led to the fragmentation of elephant, orangutan, and rhinoceros habitat. Impacts on the condition of the forests have been enormous, which leads to shrinking forests that brought wildlife, especially big mammals like elephants, into more frequent contact with people, increasing human-wildlife conflicts. In degraded forest and hill ranges, where natural fruiting is infrequent and seasonal, orangutan populations may not be able to survive. Fragmentation of the rhinoceros population into several groups and the several remaining are so isolated that they rarely or never meet to breed. Despite these ongoing processes, there remains hope as Borneo still has one of the largest contiguous areas of habitat for key species in Asia. Borneo pygmy elephants, or Elephas maximus borneensis, is the world's smallest known subspecies of elephants. Concentrated in Sabah, particularly floodplains, tributaries, and the upper catchment of the Kinabatangan and Sigama River. A few individuals reign into East Kalimantan, Indonesia. The elephants usually travel in small, female-led groups of around eight individuals, which periodically merge with larger groups in the more open feeding grounds, particularly on riverbanks. Males become solitary for much of the time after sexual maturity, but they may travel in groups of two or three and follow the female-led herds from time to time for mating. WWF Borneo Species Program works on saving the Bornean pygmy elephant by teaming up with the Sabah Wildlife Department to identify and secure ecological corridors for the annual movements of elephants. In 2005, the Elephant Satellite Tracking Program in Sabah began to study this movement in Sabah's heart of Borneo Forest and Lower Kinabatangan River region. It was soon discovered that the elephants preferred lowland forest as their main habitat and moved only along areas with water sources. The Asian elephant is the largest forest herbivore in Asia one adult can eat up to 150 kilograms of vegetation per day, feeding mostly on species of palms, grasses, and wild bananas. They also require supplementary minerals which they receive from salt licks or clay-rich soils. So far, based on WWF's research in the field, more than 160 species of plants are consumed by the elephants in Borneo. The primary threat to these elephants is the loss of continuous lowland and valley forests. Mammals of their size require large feeding grounds and viable breeding populations with suitable male-to-female ratios. Shrinking forests have also brought the elephants into more frequent contact with people, increasing human-elephant conflict in this region. The large blocks of forest they require are being fragmented by development of forest areas and conversion of natural forest to commercial plantations. 
Human disturbances within forests such as logging, increased agriculture, building of palm oil mills with associated settlements and hunting are rapidly breaking up contact between subpopulations, as well as minimizing the areas of forest available for each small group to live and feed on. In order to save the Borneo pygmy elephant, it is important to ensure that the human-elephant conflict incident could be minimized. The key to reduce the human-elephant conflict in Borneo is, first and foremost, to encourage the adoption of sound land use strategies and proper land use planning by the government, land developers and local communities. This means that the forest habitat connectivity is very important to ensure the survival of this species. Forest connectivity is also important in order to ensure the survival of orangutan in Borneo. Asia's only great ape, the orangutan, or man of the forest, is found only on the islands of Borneo and Sumatra. Globally classified as endangered, orangutans in Malaysia, Sabah and Sarawak are probably best classed as vulnerable. The Kinabatangan Sagama orangutan population represents the largest orangutan population in Malaysia and arguably the most secure orangutan population in the world. Orangutan is an endangered species in Borneo. In Malaysia, Sabah and Sarawak, the species is best classed as vulnerable because the rate of orangutan habitat loss has fallen off to a very low level in recent years. There is almost no hunting of this species, and most of the remaining populations occur in forests to be retained as protected areas or under natural forest management for timber production. An understanding of three main features of the biology of the orangutan can quickly help us to see why the orangutan has become endangered with extinction and why, in the more stable conditions of Sabah and Sarawak, it remains vulnerable. Firstly, orangutans can survive only in extensive natural forests and only some forests, mainly in lowlands and swamps. Secondly, orangutans require high-quality foods and a variety of fruits. In regions where natural fruiting is infrequent and seasonal, such as hill ranges, orangutan populations may not be able to survive, even where there is no hunting or disease. Orangutans can and do eat young leaves and bark plants, but these are not their main foods. They cannot survive for long without fruits. Thirdly, orangutans grow slowly and breed very slowly. It is thought that the average wild female orangutan successfully bears only about three young during her lifetime, even under optimum circumstances. This means that any kind of pressure which slows natural breeding rate or raises death rate has an enormous impact on the survival of the population. Such pressures may be hunting or disease such as malaria, but the most severe pressure may be El Nino droughts. Some of the orangutan population in the Kinabatangan Sagama area is already isolated due to forest degradation and the biological barrier that is the Sagama River. Previous logging activities and forest fires in some of this forest have partly damaged the forest structure. In the near future, the orangutan population in this area may decline due to poor habitat and low carrying capacity. However, the present government of Sabah has made a commitment to maintain orangutan forest habitat in Ulu Sugama Malua Forest Reserve under natural forest management. Under this management, there may not be plans to convert the area into plantations, but implement forest restoration activities. WWF works closely with the Sabah Forestry Department to align forest management units to the certification by the Forest Stewardship Council, or FSC. This ensures international standards of timber harvesting that is globally accepted. WWF takes part in Sabah's forest management exercises and supports any assistance or investments in forest management that guarantee viable orangutan populations. To help out the restoration program for the state, WWF conducts studies on orangutan distribution in Ulusugama Malua using aerial and ground surveys. Repeated observations of orangutans in logged forests by researchers in Sabah 
showed conclusively that the largest number of orangutans are in fact in logged forests and degraded forests. Restoring the orangutan habitat does not mean large investments in locking up land, because orangutans can survive in restored forests that are to be managed for timber production. The important point is that the areas with orangutans are not converted to plantations of one species. Besides orangutans, the Sumatran rhinoceros also share the same habitat with the Borneo pygmy elephant in Borneo, especially in Sabah. The Sumatran rhinoceros is one of the world's rarest mammals and is critically endangered. It is the smallest rhino species with not one, but two horns. They are hunted for their horns, believed to have medicinal values in Central Asia. Land clearing and forest fragmentation in Sabah makes it easy for these poachers to operate in areas that were inaccessible before. The ever-dropping numbers of Sumatran rhinos is mainly due to illegal hunting. This small population can only support a small gene pool, which leads to inbreeding. Their distribution in fragmented forests make it difficult for them to meet and breed. Poachers target rhinos for supposed medicinal properties in their horns, which carry a high price on the black market and for other body parts. It is estimated that there are less than 40 rhinoceros left in Borneo. The remaining rhinos are so isolated they may rarely or never meet to breed. A study revealed that a high proportion of female evidently have reproductive tract problems, while many of the remaining rhinos are old and possibly beyond reproductive age. Essentially, the death rate may exceed the birth rate. As this form of rhino, Dicerorhinus, has been around on the earth for about 35 million years, WWF believes we must save the species from extinction. One obvious way forward is to concentrate a few of the remaining wild breeding rhinos into a situation where their chances of breeding are boosted. There is no recent confirmed record of Sumatran rhinos in Brunei, Sarawak or Kalimantan. In Sabah, the distribution of badak, as it is known locally, keeps shrinking and the numbers have declined alarmingly. The Sumatran rhino has been found in a wide variety of forest habitats, from lowland rainforests and swamps to mountain moss forests. It has been reported to prefer hilly areas near water, particularly steep upper valleys with thick undergrowth, as well as secondary forest where the upper canopy is broken and the smaller shrubs and vines on which it feeds are more numerous. Salt licks are an important habitat requirement of the Sumatran rhino. Weighing around 600 to 800 kilograms, this small rhino stands 1 to 1.5 meters tall at the shoulder and measures 2 to 3 meters in length. It has relatively few skin wrinkles except around the neck. The skin is 16 millimeters thick at its thickest part and usually in dark gray to brown. Like other rhinos, the Sumatran rhino has poor vision. A healthy diet for the Sumatran rhino consists of a great diversity of tropical vegetation. It is a browser that can eat up to 50 kilograms daily of leaves and twigs, of young saplings and small trees. A rhino also feeds on fallen fruits and is reputed to be partial to figs and wild mangoes. It visits natural mineral concentrations, salt licks, possibly to obtain salt and to socialize. WWF partners with Sabah Wildlife Department, Sabah Forestry Department, the Royal Malaysia Police and other NGOs to strengthen the enforcement activities in the forest reserves Protection against poaching is especially important in Borneo because the smaller the size of the remaining population, the less its chances of survival. A natural rhino breeding program is part of the strategy to improve this. Maintaining natural forests, restoring degraded ones, and strengthening the enforcement are vital steps for the continued survival of orangutans, elephants, and rhinoceros in Sabah. 
Hence, the Sabah government's initiative to retain the largest orangutan population in the Ulu Sagama Malawa Forest Reserves under Sustainable Forest Management, SFM, deserves full support. WWF is working collaboratively with Sabah Forestry Department and Sabah Wildlife Department to address the importance of managing the forest sustainably. WWF envisions a large and continuous forest landscape in Borneo that continues to secure its highly diverse fauna and flora. These natural resources, if managed sustainably, may in the long run provide economic benefits for local communities and the state government. As the day closes to an end, WWF Malaysia urgently needs the continued support of the public, the governments and its partners to realize this dream to protect the natural habitats and endangered species of Borneo.